पंद्रह सौ प्रीलोडेड गानों वाला की पैड फोन धमाकेदार साउंड के साथ कारवा मोबाइल हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे चैप्टर सेवन नॉलेज ऑफ द एब्सुलूट श्री भगवान वाचा मै आसक्त मना पार्थ योग युंजन्मदाश्रय असंशय समग्रम यथा ज्ञासी तृणु नाउ हियर ओ सन ऑफ पृथा अर्जुन हाउ बाय प्रैक्टिसिंग योगा इन फुल कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ मी विथ माइंड अटैच टू मी यू कैन नो मी इन फुल free from doubt we saw previously lord krishna gave a clue to arjuna what is that science that you have to understand in order to become freed from the clutches of birth and death which is the primary goal of all the spiritualists and that lord krishna told is the subject matter of god he explained janm karm ch me divyam evam yo veti tatvatah my birth and my activities are transcendental they are divine they don't follow the laws of this nature evam yoveti tatvatah but a person who is able to understand the science of my birth and my activities tyaktva deham punar janma nayeti maameti swarjana after leaving this body he does not take any more such miserable material bodies but he comes back to me and he lives his eternal spiritual life in a spiritual form but the question is how to understand the birth and activities the science of krishna the so lord krishna explained various processes different rungs of the yoga ladder karma yoga gyan yoga dhyan yoga but none of these processes enable a living entity to understand krishna in perfection That is why Lord Krishna is explaining here. Now hear from me, me Shrinu, the process by which you can understand me, a sun shyam without any doubt. Others may always be doubtful; they will not have clear idea. But if you follow this process, a sun shyam, all the doubts about God's existence, His activities will be cleared. Samagram, samagram means in completion. so what is the process these words are very important mai asakt mana partha mai asakt mana mind attached to me mad ashraya in full consciousness of me yogam yunjan by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me in complete surrenderance to me and your mind should be attached to me in this way you should engage in my service yogam yunjan this is the only way of knowing krishna in completion that is why the great stalwart son and disciple of maharshi vedvyas the author of mahabharat this bhagavad gita he spoke this very nice verse about knowing absolute truth he was a personality liberated from birth and shukde goswami says yadangri abhidhyan samadhi dhautaya dhyan upashyanti hi tatva matmanah वदंति ये तत्कवयो यथारुचम समे मुकुंदो भगवान प्रसीदता इटल्स यद अंग्री अंग्री मींस द लोटस फीट अविध्यान समाधि धौतया समाधि मींस इंटेंस मेडिटेशन डीप अब्जॉर्प्शन ऑन द अंग्री लोटस फीट ऑफ कृष्णा एट एवरी सेकंड दिस इज कॉल्ड कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस yad angri abhidhyan samadhi dhautaya so when a person is in trance in samadhi every second he is able to think of lotus feet of krishna within the heart angri specifically it is mentioned the meditation on the form of krishna should not begin 
by directly looking at his lotus face or hands arms belly or any other limbs of the body our only problem is that we want to compete with god given a chance we want to take the position of lord we want to become god of the world so here that is why we want to become master of all that we survey we want to dominate over the other living entities and this creates all the problems in this world every person is trying to lord over other person and the solution is trying to become servant that is what chaitanya mahaprabhu told gopi bhartuf pat kamalayor das das dasanu dasah i am the servant of the servant of the servant of maintainer of gopis so becoming servant and not master is the solution to all the problems of life servant of servant of servant of krishna any way we are servant after all education if you do not find job then our education is useless so we have to serve a person who can give us money for our maintenance we have to if we are businessmen no i am not serving anybody no we have to serve our customers everybody is engaged in some or the other service if we become servant not directly servant one should be very humble servant of servant of servant of servant of god then that is success of life in that stage a person can be very very peaceful and understand the signs of god and now even in corporates people are realizing that is why they have coined this word servant leaders the leaders should think i am servant so actually whatever we may try we may present and invent various models but the right model of leading a happy way of life and eventually understanding god going back to god is having a servant attitude as it is mentioned in the vedas so that is why we should start meditating from the lotus feet of krishna and when a person is always thinking of the lotus feet of krishna and 24 hours one is able to continue such meditation then one can gradually move up and focus on other limbs of krishna so those who are always able to have this meditation vadanti he tat kavayo yatha rucham kavaya means learned persons they give so many opinions about absolute truth but only a person who is absorbed in such trance he only is able to understand janati tatvan bhagwan mahimyo only such a person can understand the tatva the absolute truth see the absolute truth in trance and the same thing krishna is explaining here mai asakt manaf partha mai should be completely attached to me and in full consciousness of me you should engage in yoga practice engage in my service offer the results of your activities so how does mind become focused in that way on krishna this is a great mystical science there are nine ways of executing it shravanam kirtanam vishnu ho smaranam pad sevanam अर्चनम वंदनम दास्यम सख्यम आत्मनिवेदन सो वन हैज टू लर्न दिस साइंस अंडर द गाइडेंस ऑफ अ वेरी एक्सपर्ट स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर बट द फर्स्ट एंड द फोर मोस्ट ऑफ ऑल दीज नाइन प्रोसेसेस इज श्रवणम दैट मीन्स हियरिंग हियरिंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट इज वाई लॉर्ड कृष्णा एक्सप्लेन्स टू अर्जुना हियर तत् शिणु नाउ हियर अबाउट दिस प्रोसेस ज्ञानम ते हम स विज्ञान इदम वक्ष्या अशेषत यज्ञानेह भूयोन्यज्ञातव्यम अवशिष्य आई शेल नॉट डिक्लेयर अन टू यू इन फुल दिस नॉलेज बोथ फिनोमिनल एंड नोमिनल बाय नोइंग विच दे शेल रिमेन नथिंग फर्दर टू बी नोन So all the intelligent people who are hearing this I request to please note this verse very carefully. There are two kinds of knowledge. One is called gyanam another is vigyanam. Knowledge of phenomenal world and that of noumenal world. What is this phenomena and noumena? Phenomena we all know are observations the world as we observe it. so these are the terms which are used in philosophy especially by emmanuel kant who told there are two aspects of existence the one that we perceive and another which actually is and both may not always be the same for example 
we see water in the desert that is phenomena our eyes give us knowledge that it is water we are seeing water this is called gyanam but what is vigyanam scientific knowledge or what is actually happening that is described as total internal reflection of light actually there is nothing but simply reflection of light in the air and what we see is water similarly we have to understand all the knowledge that we are perceiving we are receiving through our senses and mind this point we have discussed we are discussing again because it's very very important to know this so our senses are just like small window in our room through that window only we can perceive what is there outside our house if somebody tells us please describe your city we can only tell but we have to describe it sitting within our room then we can only tell what our window is showing we can never tell about the actual and complete nature of the city and from that window if we see mirage then whatever we see we are seeing that is also illusion in a similar fashion are these senses they are just like windows into the existence for a blind person forms or colors may not exist for a person who has no touch sensation he may never be able to experience anything any touch ever for a person who is not having sensation to taste for him taste does not exist if all the senses stop working a person is not able to see not able to hear not able to touch then for such a person the world does not exist but this is not fact the world is existing with all its beauty and different touch sensations different fragrances different tastes different colors beauty but the senses are not working so just like a person within the room should not be over confident of his opinions what he is perceiving through the window at best that is limited view of the world and at worst everything is illusion from his window only mirage is being seen so even that is false so thus one can never know the nature of noumenal world what is actually happening what is science science means knowing things as it is but current science also bases its research on the knowledge acquired from these windows these senses so we can always tell what we are perceiving the real nature of the things we shall never know <clears throat> so how to understand the real nature of the things so the real nature of the things we shall never know so how do we tell the real nature of the things there is only one way to know it only when the creator gives the knowledge. see i have manufactured your body your mind and senses and in this way you are perceiving the world but this is the actual reality of the world how i have created it there is no other way of knowing it and unless a person comes to the platform of knowledge where is the question of happiness an animal dies chasing the water in the desert never gets the water similarly we are dying chasing the ever escaping happiness in this world but we never get it the situation is not much different animal does not question what is truth whether that is water actually in the desert or not similarly we also if we don't question whether there is happiness in this world or not in this petty materialism we will also keep on dying repeatedly without attaining that happiness which actually satisfies my heart for this actual knowledge of truth is important what exists and what does not exist what is happiness and what is illusory happiness so now krishna will explain the knowledge of the phenomenal world this material world as we see around us and that of the spiritual world the thing which sustains this material world manushya nam sahasreshu kashchit yatati siddhaye यतामी सिद्धा कश्चिन मां वेति तत्वत आउट ऑफ मेनी थाउजेंड्स अमंग मेन वन मे इन देवर फॉर परफेक्शन एंड ऑफ दोज यू हैव अचीव परफेक्शन हार्डली वन नोज मी इन ट्रुथ मनुष्य नाम सहस्रेशु 
So usually people also have intelligence like that of animals who just satisfy the senses and don't bother about truth. Ignorance is bliss. Immediate satisfaction is accepted for long term misery. So Krishna is mentioning Manushya naam sahasreshu out of thousands and thousands of men kashchit one person may try siddhaye to make one's life perfect perfect means understanding that i am not this body i am spirit soul this is the first step of spiritual perfection realizing one's existence different from the body very few people out of thousands of men endeavor for this path and out of many many people who may try to walk this path kashchit yatati siddhaye very few will become perfect will be able to come to this platform of realization that i am not this body and yatatam api siddhanam of all those siddhas perfected beings kashchin veti mam tatvatah hardly one knows me in truth so knowing krishna is so difficult first of all knowing our existence different from body is difficult and among thousands of such people who have realized this hardly one knows krishna in truth so thus unless we take help of this knowledge where krishna himself is describing his glories it is impossible to understand him and thus it is impossible to stop this process of birth and death so let us see what is the knowledge of krishna from the words of lord krishna himself भूमिरापो नलो वायु हम मनो बुद्धिरे वचा अहंकार मे भिन्ना प्रकृतिरष्टधा अर्थ वॉटर फायर एयर ईथर माइंड इंटेलिजेंस एंड फॉल्स ही गो ऑल टूगेदर दीज एट कम्फ्लाइज माई सेपरेटेड मटीरियल एनर्जीज दिस वर्स इज सब्जेक्ट मैटर ऑफ ग्रेट साइंटिफिक रिसर्च we analyze the world in terms of matter and energy now of course modern science is coming to conclusion that everything is but energy so vedic science has always described the whole world as simply made up of energies and of course the energetic who is controlling all these energies so there are various numerous energies of krishna broadly they can be classified as external and internal energy what is this external just like cow is there cow gives milk and the milk is separated from cow so milk is also energy of cow is coming from cow but now it is separate that is called external to cow but the same milk when it is present in cow's body in the form of uh, cow's blood then that is internal energy of cow in a similar fashion everything whatever is there in this world there is nothing beyond krishna and his energies but there are energies which are directly connected to krishna they are called internal energies and there is energy which is separated from krishna that is called external energy or bhinna prakriti that is explained here this external energy manifests itself into eight forms which are these forms भूमि रापो नलो वायु खम मनो बुद्धि रे वचा अर्थ एयर वॉटर फायर ईथर माइंड इंटेलिजेंस एंड फॉल्स ईगो द यूनिवर्स इज मेड अप ऑफ दीज एट फंडामेंटल एनर्जीज एंड इवन द एटम इज मेड अप ऑफ दीज एट एनर्जीज वी थिंक ओ द वॉटर इज देयर वेन हाइड्रोजन एंड ऑक्सीजन कंबाइंड टूगेदर देन अ मॉलिक्यूल इज कॉल वॉटर बट नो it is not that uh, only when there is a molecule it is called water water is present within each and every atom it is not that fire uh, when two gases combine together oxidation process produces fire fire is present within every atom also and fortunately modern science has discovered this fire within the atom and that is called nuclear energy similarly science may advance one day to understand how there is even water within the atom even earth within the atom even air within the atom the vedas upanishads explain as is the macro so is the micro purnasya purnam idam purnat purnam udachyate 
ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವ ಅವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಎವ್ರಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಯೂನಿಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಎನರ್ಜೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಫುಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಎನರ್ಜೀಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಆಟಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಅ ಸ್ಯಾಂಪಲ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಮೆಕ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ಡ್ರೈವ್ಸ್ ಅ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಡ್ರೈವ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಅರ್ ಬಾಡೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸ್ಯಾಂಪಲ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಅನ್ ಆಟಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅ ಸ್ಯಾಂಪಲ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ಅ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಮಸ್ಕಿಟೊ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮಸ್ಕಿಟೊ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಮೆಟಬಾಲಿಸಮ್ ಮಸ್ಕಿಟೊ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಸ್ಕಿಟೊ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಈಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಡಿಫೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಈವನ್ ಅ ಸೆಲ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಈಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮೆಟಬಾಲಿಸಮ್ ಗ್ರೋಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸಸ್ ಬೈ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಡಿಫೆನ್ಸ್ ಮೆಕ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ರೋ ಸೋ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಮೆಕ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ಮೆಟಬಾಲಿಸಮ್ ಗ್ರೋತ್ ಡಿಫೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಪುಟ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿದ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಬಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಇನ್ಸೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸೈಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಡಾಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈಕ್ರೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಟೈನಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಗಾನ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಮೆಕ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಏಟ್ ಎನರ್ಜೀಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಪ್ರೈಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಎನರ್ಜೀಸ್ so this body that we have this is composed of five which we are seeing perceiving earth air water fire and sky when death happens then this gross body is left behind but the soul is carried in the subtle body to the next gross body we have got two bodies here just like we can have a waist coat and then a coat or a shirt and over shirt we have the coat similarly we have got two dresses one is subtle another is gross the gross dress is changed at the time of death but the subtle dress it carries one from one gross body to another gross body that is why many times people especially children are able to remember their past lives if you do some research there are enough case studies now so why a person is able to remember the past life because the body is changed it means the memory is not stored somewhere in the brain the brain is just a via media but it is stored in the mind and the mind carries us to next body mind intelligence false ego it carries a person to the next body and only when a person is liberated then a person drops the subtle body also and the soul goes on to the spiritual world but as long as soul is in the material world mind intelligence and false ego always carries it is always accompanying the soul in different unlimited gross bodies apare amitastvanyam prakritim vidhi me param jeeva bhutam mahabaho yayedam dharyate jagat besides this inferior nature o mighty armed arjuna there is a superior energy of mind which are all living entities who are struggling with material nature and are sustaining the universe here lord krishna clearly describes the living entity being completely different energy from matter material energies apareyam itastu anyam anyam means it is different and apareyam apareyam means para means superior apara means inferior energy so apareyam itastu anyam so this material energies are inferior there is another energy which is superior and what is that jeev bhuta mahabaho that is the living entity which sustains the universe the material energy cannot act cannot do anything unless the living entity takes some action so because of us we are sustaining and manipulating the matter of this universe so thus with the help of lord krishna we have to understand that this consciousness that we see in this body is not the manifestation of some combination of matter krishna is telling please understand the nominal world from me what is the science it may appear to you that the matter when combined in certain configuration gives rise to consciousness but that is not fact just like heat and light is symptom of fire consciousness is the symptom of another energy which is internal energy which is always in connection with me and that is the living entity now what is the source one may ask from where all these energies are coming that lord krishna describes in this verse 
एतद्योनी भूतानि सर्वाणीतुपारया अहम कृत्न से जगत प्रभव प्रलयस्तथा Of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world, know for certain that I am both its origin and dissolution. So Krishna is the source of all, not just spiritual energies, but even material energy. Mattaf parataram nanyat kinchidasti dhananjaya mai sarvam idam protam sutre mani gana eva. O conqueror of wealth Arjuna there is no truth superior to me everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread the very important verse krishna is telling how not energy but energetic is absolute truth krishna is telling mattaf partaram na anyat there is no truth beyond me We are very expert at analyzing doing the root cause analysis. As we know there was bubonic plague in Europe and as people say almost 40% to 60% of the population succumbed to this and they died. And what accelerated the death was actually our own research work. So some people the intellectuals they wanted to figure out what is this disease spreading overnight? and who is carrying this disease and then they understood actually this disease is being carried by the cats so then they killed all the cats that they could find and eventually they realized actually it was not coming from cats but from the rats and when they killed the cats all the cats there were no cats to kill the rats and thus the disease spread even more widely So if you do imperfect research work this is how we can harm our own self If a thief thinks oh this policeman is a cause of my misery my persecution if i kill this policeman i may do any amount of robbery nobody will arrest me it appears to be very logical but it is greatest foolishness he'll be punished even more if he does that or if he thinks no not policeman actually this advocate he argues against me i am suffering because of not him the judge he always write sentence against me let me kill the judge only this is illusion ultimately there are some laws and the king has established the laws we have to understand who is the ultimate cause the ultimate cause unless a person understands this that is why bhagavatam tells etavad ev jigyasam tatva jigyasu natmanah one should do research up to the point of the ultimate cause if we stop at the intermediate cause rather than helping it will create disaster in our life that is what is happening in the world today because of lack of the knowledge of absolute truth we are thinking lack of money is the cause of my suffering bad governance is the cause of my suffering lacking some skills is the cause of my suffering bad people or family members are the cause of my suffering these are not facts the fact is i do not know absolute truth I have broken some laws of nature in ignorance of the truth and because of my breaking the laws of nature these are simply instruments of my suffering just like the judge is an instrument the executor is an instrument the advocate or the policeman is an instrument in the suffering of a thief so that is why the analysis should be done up to the ultimate cause etava see bhagavatam is so logical why we are not reading all these scriptures एतवदेव जिज्ञास तत्व जिज्ञासु नात्मन एनी पर्सन हू इज इंक्विजिटिव अबउट ट्रूथ शुड पर्सू दिस क्वेरी अनलेस ही रीच इज द अल्टिमेट कॉज एंड इफ यू डोंट डू दिस थिंग देन इट इज एनिमल इंटेलिजेंस एनिमल जस्ट गिव द डॉग पीसेस ऑफ ब्रेड एंड द डॉग इज हैप्पी डॉग डज नॉट थिंक ओ वाई एम आई डिपेंडेंट ऑन ह्यूमन बींग्स फॉर माई फूड from where human being is getting this bread can i not have the same technology and manufacture my own bread he will not think and keep on suffering remain hungry and keep on howling the entire night so we also immediately we go for immediate gratification and we are not bothered why am i dying what is this creation why am i getting old why so many diseases we are breaking some laws of nature and we are breaking the laws of nature because we are forgetful of god 
when we are forgetful of our relationship with god that loving relationship which gives us the eternal satisfaction in absence of it we hanker for sense gratification we fall under illusion and break the laws and the suffer so here very kindly krishna is explaining mat taf partaram nanyad arjuna there is no truth beyond me this body is made up of eight energies these eight energies are coming from three modes of nature that krishna will explain further we will discuss these three modes of nature are coming from mahat tatva mahat tatva is coming from brahm brahmano hi pratishta ham krishna will explain in bhagavad gita and mattah parataram na anya beyond me there is nothing there is no truth do not think krishna is also coming from somewhere mattah parataram na anya kinchid asti dhananjaya i am the end result of all research janmadi asya yatah om namo bhagavate vasudevaya ved vyas has described this in the beginning of Shrimad Bhagavatam I offer my respects to Vasudev the son of Vasudev and Devaki Lord Shri Krishna who is absolute truth janmadi asya yatah he is the source of creation maintenance and annihilation of the entire existence but then why we are not able to see him that krishna explains sutre manigada eva we see a very beautiful pearl necklace we see beautiful pearls but we don't see the thread that is invisible in the necklace in a similar fashion krishna is telling i am sustaining everything but just like the thread of a pearl i am invisible so krishna through his energies which are all pervading he sustains everything as parmatma he enters within every atom but he remains invisible like the thread so we should not depend upon our eyes which only describe us the phenomena but we should understand the noumena as explained by the creator himself रसोहमपसु कौंते प्रभास्मी शशि सूर्य प्रणवसर्वेदेशु शब्द खे पौरुषम ऋषु ओ सन ऑफ कुंती आई एम द टेस्ट ऑफ वॉटर द लाइट ऑफ द सन एंड द मून द सिलेबल ओम इन द वेदिक मंत्रास आई एम द साउंड इन ईथर एंड अबिलिटी इन मैन पुण्यो गंध पृथिव्याम चेजस्मी विभावस जीवन सर्वूतेषु तपश्चास्मी तपस्वीषु आई एम द ओरिजिनल फ्रेग्रेन्स ऑफ द अर्थ एंड आई एम द हीट इन द फायर आई एम द लाइफ ऑफ ऑल दैट लिव्स एंड आई एम द पेनेसेस ऑफ ऑल अटिक्स बीज मं सर्वूता विद्धि पार्थ सनातनम बुद्धिर्बुद्धिमतामस्मी तेजस तेजस्वी नाम हम ओ सन ऑफ पृथा नो दैट आई एम द ओरिजिनल सीड ऑफ ऑल एग्जिस्टेंसेस द इंटेलिजेंस ऑफ द इंटेलिजेंट एंड द प्रोएस ऑफ ऑल पावरफुल मेन बलम बलवताम चाहम काम राग विवर्जित धर्मा विरुद्धो भूतेशु kamosmi bhartarshabha i am the strength of the strong devoid of passion and desire i am sex life which is not contrary to religious principles o lord of the bharatas arjuna so krishna is further describing his glories rasoham apsu kontya prabha asmi shashi surya yo ho i am the taste of water apsu I am the light of the sun and the moon. How do we understand this fact? Now Krishna explained he is a person, nothing is beyond his personality. Energies are controlled by him. And now Krishna is telling I am the taste, I am the light. So Krishna is energy or Krishna is a person. So many people when they read these shlokas they get confused. I am the intelligence of the intelligent I am the strength of the strong so it means krishna is energy basically all the energy of this world you can uh, give him a name krishna but no this is not fact this has to be carefully understood so there are two classes of transcendentalists or spiritualists impersonalists and personalists impersonalists tell that the absolute truth is energy 
personalists explain no he is a person any personalist perceives krishna's presence in this way as the taste in water as the light of the sun and the moon as the intelligence of an intelligent man as the strength of a strong man and a personalist also thanks the lord for creating this taste in water he does not forget that personality actually there is no difference between personalists and impersonalists if they understand absolute truth perfectly they don't fight over these different features of the absolute truth both are features of the same absolute truth krishna and thus both personalism and impersonalism have been adjusted very nicely in the philosophy of achintya bhed abhed tatva if we just tell advaita is fact it is ultimate reality that is also not the perfect description of absolute truth if we tell dvaita we are completely different from god that is also not the perfect understanding of truth we are simultaneously one and different from god this is called achintya bhed abhed tatva the example is just like the sun and the sunlight the sun is different from the sunlight as well as the sun is same as sunlight there is never a day when there is sunlight without sun it has no existence nor is it possible that sun is there without its light the sun and sunlight are one unit in that sense there is no difference between the energies and energetic thus krishna is telling the taste is also my energy the intelligence which i have given that is also my energy and because there is no difference between me and my energy just like there is no difference between sun and the light of the sun so i am telling i am the intelligence i am the taste i am the beauty i am the splendor of the sun and the moon because there is no difference between me and my energy this is the proper understanding of the absolute truth at the same time sunlight cannot be called sun sunlight is touching my hand it does not mean i am touching the sun globe sun planet so this is the perfect understanding of god i am the same substance as that of god god is also satchidananda pure spirit soul i am also satchidananda but i am infinitesimal just like a drop of water and the ocean of water both are same substance h2o but there is difference in magnitude similarly we are one in quality with god but different in quantity this is called achintya bhed abhed tatva and it is the perfect understanding of absolute truths ye chayva satvika bhava rajasastam saschaye matta eveti tan vidhi natmaham teshu te mai all states of being be they of goodness passion or ignorance are manifested by my energy i am in one sense everything but i am independent i am not under the modes of this material nature tribhir gun mayir bhavair ebhis sarvam idam jagat mohitam na bhi janati mame bhyav param avyayam deluded by the three modes goodness passion and ignorance the whole world does not know me who am above the modes and inexhaustible so these eight energies which krishna has described as we are discussing are made up of three primary energies they are called the modes of nature called gunas in sanskrit guna means quality goodness passion and ignorance and guna also means rog sanskrit is so beautiful so sanskrit is telling these qualities goodness passion and ignorance are also the ropes that are keeping you bound in this material world how they are keeping us bound if you understand a simple example if a person is ignorant of the rules of traffic then one is bound to suffer he will jump the signal meet with an accident or there would be some fine imposition he'll uh, breach the speed limits and any so many other things he may not have permits license so that is called mode of ignorance if the mode of ignorance is affecting us we will be suffering so much and if you are conducted by mode of passion passion means so many material desires to enjoy a person who is passionate 
he might be knowing traffic laws very nicely but the desire to enjoy forces him to drive very fast and jump the speed limits or jump the traffic signal and he also or otherwise meets with an accident or fine so because of mode of passion even though a person is having some sense he is better than the person who is ignorant completely but still because of the sense desires that person is called half mad he is not able to control and act on the same platform thus if you want to have platform of sanity our senses should be completely controlled we should not have material desires and that is a platform of goodness so when a person is having goodness he is not having lust and greed very peaceful he knows the laws he will drive very nicely peacefully in the traffic he will not meet with an accident no imposition of any fine but the important point to know is why is there this car with me and where do i have to go what is my ultimate destination if the person goodness also keeps on driving very happily does not reach destination that is failure of entire driving effort and the process so the most important reason for which we have an automobile is to reach our destination and fulfill our purpose but if a person is simply in goodness it means he has knowledge but he is very happily driving now because he is happy he thinks i know everything i need not know anything i need not inquire about the goal such is the situation of the brahmanas brahmanas are very peaceful because their senses are controlled and they think now because i am peaceful i have all knowledge there is nothing beyond brahma nothing beyond this impersonal energy they don't uh, understand what is the goal of this life and what to speak of people who are driven by passion so many material desires they keep on suffering because of uncontrolled mind and senses and what to speak of people who are like animals or animals who are completely in ignorance who do not know anything about this world so deluded by these three modes all the people are bereft of my understanding mohitam they are illusioned na abhijanati did not know me mam ebhya param avyayam who am above these modes so krishna's body krishna's form is not made up of these three energies our bodies are made up of these three energies just like the director of the movie you will not find on the screen he is sitting beyond he is the director similarly the director of these three modes you will not find him in this world which is made up of three modes you will find him beyond in a different world which is called the spiritual world devi hesha gunamai mam maya duratyaya mam evaye prapadyante maya me tam tarantite this divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it so the material energy is imposing punishments upon us and material energy is simply an instrument we in ignorance or passion break the laws of nature so the reaction comes to us in the form of material suffering now without abiding by the laws of the government or the laws of uh, krishna the supreme personality we don't want to read the scriptures don't want to understand what is right and what is wrong simply by our research work we want to control matter krishna is telling it will be utter failure and that is what is happening with us we are working very very hard to become happy but only distress is increasing this proves this statement mam maya duratyaya my material energy is very difficult to overcome so material energy is work, working under direction of krishna so just like a thief if he wants to arm twist the policeman he will not be successful police is a mighty force you may defeat one policeman 10 more or 100 will come army will come to arrest you that is the arrangement of king similarly arrangement of krishna is very perfect if we break laws of nature simply by doing some arm twisting of the material nature oh this uh, sun is very hot i will have air conditioners different problem will come global warming will happen the entire planet will be burnt up so we will not be able to avoid miseries in our life to avoid miseries krishna tells the solution is mam evye prapadyante if you surrender unto me maya metam tarantite you cross over this material energy maya also means illusion 
you will cross over this illusion only when you surrender unto me then you can cross over this illusion and see the truth then you can become perfectly happy you will not be disturbed by material energy anymore but four kinds of people are not able to surrender to krishna which are these four kinds whether we fall in one of these categories let us explore namam duskriti no mudha prapadyante naradhama mayaya paritagnana asuram bhavam ashrita those miscreants who are grossly foolish lowest among mankind whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons do not surrender unto me so some people will always keep on suffering in this world they will not be able to surrender unto krishna first category is mudha mudha means an as an as carries lot of load traditionally the washerman would pile up loads of clothes on the back of an as and as will very dutifully carry the loads of clothes just for a morsel of grass and as is not able to think why am i working so hard the same path that i tread every day on either side i have lot of grass i can just go there roam and eat as much as i want but this sense does not awaken in as that is why as is called an as mudha foolish he will work so hard thinking if i do not work so hard then i will not be able to eat and maintain myself grass can only come from washerman otherwise i will starve this is ignorance similarly those people who work very hard to enjoy all the results of their activities they do not want to offer the results of their work partake a part of their results with god they are called mudhas such people often tell oh i do not have time to understand bhagavad gita so many people who give such reasons because they are so busy to produce more and more results they want to enjoy everything for themselves and they always complain of lack of time such hard working people they cannot surrender to krishna second category is namam duskritino mudha prapadyante naradhama nar adham lowest of the mankind so those people who are not advanced in civilization not advanced in social regulations economic development or religion they are called uncivilized people the tribals and even though a person is very advanced socially or economically but not advanced in terms of religion they are also called naradhama this is a version of the vedas they are telling dharme nahi na pashu bhi samana ahar nidra bhay maithunam evaj eating mating sleeping defending these are common pillars between men and animals the difference is dharma the instructions given by god if a person does not follow dharma then he is animal animal is helplessly controlled by the laws of nature next life is fixed what it is going to become and if a person does not follow dharma he or she will also be helplessly always they will be helpless in their lives will be controlled by the laws of nature and thus naradhama because they are completely helpless like animals these people also will not be able to surrender to krishna so thus following religion and having a civilized life regulated life is very important third category is maya ya aparita gyana so these people have knowledge intelligence but their intelligence is stolen away by the illusory energy of krishna these class of people are very very learned very intelligent very scholarly and they would write commentaries also on bhagavad gita but because they are mis- miscreants dushkritina they are sinful their intelligence is taken away just like the person who is very uh who is a miscreant who creates trouble madmen they are given tranquilizers they become ignorant of the reality because if they are conscious of the reality they will create trouble for others and for themselves so they are put into illusion you sleep so thus maya because these people are miscreants dushkritina they are breaking the laws of nature by their sinful activities they are also their intelligence is taken away and they are also put into bewilderment and they cannot surrender to krishna and the last category is asuram bhavam ashrita 
who are proclaimed atheists some people openly declare i don't believe in god i don't uh, follow all these things they obviously cannot surrender so these people because they are dushkritina they are not able to surrender to krishna so having a life free from all the sins not breaking laws of nature is very important to surrender to krishna and there are four classes of people who are able to surrender who are these people that krishna explains next चतुर्विधावजते माम जना सुकृति नो अर्जुन आर्त जिज्ञासुरर्थी ज्ञानी च भरतर्षभा ओ बेस्ट अमंग द भारतास फोर काइंड्स ऑफ पायस मेन रेंडर डिवोशनल सर्विस अन टू मी द डिस्ट्रेस्ड द डिजायर ऑफ वेल्थ द इंक्विजिटिव एंड ही हु इज सर्चिंग फॉर द नॉलेज ऑफ द एब्जोल्यूट so sukriti is very important to come to god the illusory energy of krishna goddess durga maya devi does not allow miscreants criminals to approach god they will create but disturbance so those people who have pious backgrounds who follow the laws of nature the religion they are called sukritina and these people sometimes when they are arth arth means they are in distress they surrender unto god and also second category is artharthi when we are desirous of material achievements give me success material wealth success in some examination or a good job or good life partner these people also go to god approach god when we are hungry oh god give us our daily bread so those people who are in distress those people who have material desires if they are sukritina they approach god surrender to god but these two categories are not very mature they may deviate from the path of god realization at any time when they become little happy or the material desires are fulfilled or if they are frustrated they may go away but next two categories they are important they stick to this process next third category is jigyasu some people they become frustrated from these material affairs who oh, have got success also sometimes i have not got success also but the satisfaction is not there there is frustration in life so in this frustration they become inquisitive so let me understand what is this bhagavad gita who is god what is this world what is real happiness so these inquis- inquisitive souls also if they are sukritina they surrender unto god and the most advanced category is gyani philosopher one who is searching after absolute truths they also surrender to krishna tesham gyani nitya yukta ek bhaktir vishishyate priyo hi gyani no atyartham aham satcha mama priya of these the wise one who is in full knowledge in union with me through pure devotional service is the best for i am very dear to him and he is dear to me udara sarva evaite gyani tvatmayeva me matam asita sahi yuktaatma mameva nuttamam gatim all these devotees are undoubtedly magnanimous souls but he who is situated in knowledge of me i consider verily to dwell in me being engaged in my transcendental service he attains me here krishna is telling all these are magnanimous souls anybody who is approaching krishna for any reason but among them the person who has knowledge of krishna and in this way one engages in the service of krishna he is most dear to krishna so thus it is important that we execute devotional service if without knowledge also we are engaged in devotional service we are chanting his names hearing about him engaged in his service thinking of him carrying out the orders worshiping the lord's form and all these uh, navadha bhakti we are engaged in but without knowledge then that situation is not very advanced but a person who knows the knowledge of krishna and in knowledge he engages in service krishna is telling he is most dear to me that person never deviates from the path of truth he gets special protection of krishna 
so when the yoga process devotional service is executed in knowledge advancement is very very swift thus we should be very enthusiastic to get the knowledge from the scriptures like bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam upanishads and all the other wonderful vedic literature बहूना जन्म नामते ज्ञानवान्मापद्यते वासुदेव समहात्मा सुदुर्लभ सो इट इज नॉट ईजी टू कम टू दिस पॉइंट नाउ कृष्ण इज नॉट टेलिंग हियर अ ज्ञानी इज वेरी डियर टू मी नो नॉट अ ज्ञानी अ ज्ञानी डज नॉट नो अबाउट कृष्ण हियर कृष्ण एक्सप्लेन्स बहूना जन्म नामते ज्ञानवान् प्रपद्यंते after many many births a gyani a person who is seeking knowledge he surrenders unto me so out of many many gyanis after research work of many many lifetimes vasudeva sarvamiti there is nothing but vasudev personality of vasudev and energies coming out of vasudev there is nothing else apart from vasudev and his energies in this world Samahatma, such a great soul, Sudhurlabha is very, very rare. Such a gyani is being praised here, who has understood that Vasudev is absolute truth, and thus he surrenders unto Krishna, who engages Chaturvida Bhajan Te Maam. Bhajan is very important. One who is doing Bhajan, Bhajan means engaging in service of Krishna. Usually, we understand Bhajan means chanting and singing for Krishna. Yes, these are the beginning process of Bhajan, but Bhajan means. any kind of activity in which senses are engaged in the service of krishna so engaging in service of krishna is important bhajante maam but a person who does bhajan in knowledge he is most dear to krishna but such a platform is to be attained after many many births of research work bahu naam janma naam ante but if one is fortunate he can directly receive this knowledge from krishna and that shorten this research work of many many births either you research and find out the answers or you understand from the creator himself the second process is very quick and perfect and this process is being recommended here in the bhagavad gita may shino krishna is telling to arjuna please hear from me now krishna has described the wise person surrenders unto krishna some people who are not wise who do not surrender their situation is explained here kama istai istai ritagyana prapadyante anya devata tam tam niyama masthaya prakritya niyata svaya those whose minds are distorted by material desires surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures so many people tell that you can worship any form any devi devata any demigod or goddesses the result would be the same here krishna is telling no these people do not even read bhagavad gita it seems because in bhagavad gita it is mentioned anya devata those people prapadyante those who surrender to other devata demigods or goddesses ritagyana their intelligence also has been stolen away by kama by their lusty desires usually if we analyze why people approach various demigods and goddesses especially in india uh, people are you know you'll find varieties of worship and some people think oh indians means they will worship or those people who follow sanatan dharma they have many gods god is not one for them no god is always one but god also has many many ministers who support him in carrying out the universal affairs and they have been given unique charges the department of controlling fire air the supplies of grains so like this there are various demigods for it so when we have various desires like those people who want to become very learned they surrender unto and worship god as saraswati those people who want to get material opulences they surrender unto lord shiva or uh, goddess durga those who want beautiful wife they go to goddess uma or brahma like this descriptions are there so you approach particular demigod if you want to have 
nice benefits you want good health you worship sun god like this different kinds of worships are given so people surrender to other devatas when there is some material desire in the mind but krishna is telling kama istai istai rita gyana their intelligence is stolen away these people are not considered very wise and as per their own natures as per our nature we are certain that just like a small child desires chocolate then he can go to a chocolate shop child is not intelligent similarly as per the nature of their body they have some particular desires and thus they are directed to various demigods यो यो याम याम तनु भक्त श्रद्धयाचिमिछति तस्चला श्रद्धा काम एव विदधाम्यहम् सो दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट आई एम इन एवरी वंस हार्ट एज अ सुपर सोल एज सून एज वन डिजायर्स टू वर्शिप द डेमी गॉड्स आई मेक हिज फेथ स्टडी सो दैट ही कैन डिवोट हिमसेल्फ टू सम पर्टिक्युलर डीटी द कृष्ण इज टेलिंग how do people get faith in some demigods because god is so kind if we have material desires he is sitting in our heart as super soul parmatma he directs us to particular devta and makes our faith very steady so faith or faithlessness both come from krishna if you want to become forgetful of god and want to enjoy this material world krishna will create faithlessness in him and if we are determined i want to know what is truth what is this creation what is purpose then krishna will inspire faith and right direction from the heart so krishna is telling i only make their faith steady in other devatas devatas do not have this capacity to instill this faith and give directions sataya shraddhaya yuktas tasya radhanam ihate labhate cha tatah kaman mayaiva vihitan hitan endowed with such a faith he seeks favor of a particular demigod and obtains his desires but in actuality these benefits are bestowed by me alone so such a person is able to attain what he wants by worshiping particular demigod but krishna is telling actually i am only giving he does not know this they are ministers actually king is supplying everything through his ministers to the subjects thus it is krishna's arrangement only so whenever there is any supply it may come through uh any vendor it may come through parents it may come through our pets whatever is coming to us any help any supply actually god is doing that either through men animals or demigods अंतवत्तु फलम तेषाम तद्भवति अल्पमेधसाम देवान देव यजो यांति मद्भक्ता यांति मामपि मेन ऑफ स्मॉल इंटेलिजेंस वर्शिप द डेमी गॉड्स एंड देयर फ्रूट्स आर लिमिटेड एंड टेंपरेरी दोस हु वर्शिप द डेमी गॉड्स गो टू द प्लैनेट्स ऑफ द डेमी गॉड्स बट माय डिवोटीज अल्टीमेटली रीच माय सुप्रीम प्लैनेट so thus people are not reading bhagavad gita they tell you worship any devi and devta you will attain the same result any form you worship this is not fact krishna is telling no the result is different devan devi ajo yanti because ultimately such commentators have no faith either in krishna or on the demigods no the demigods do exist there are various planets and there are various people who are in charge controllers of the planet and they are called demigods and they are existing the descriptions are given in the vedas so those people who have no such proper faith they tell oh, all these forms are imaginary as per your desire you can imagine any form but krishna is telling different results are attained devan dev yajo yanti those people who worship devtas they go to devtas to their planet and those people who worship me they come to my planet and again krishna is telling those people who worship other devatas please read the word of the first line last word alpa medhasam medhasa means intelligence brain substance alpa means less they are less intelligent why because antavattu phalam tesham the result is subject to be destroyed antavat it is temporary so we are eternal why we should work very hard for something temporary 
there are two options for you you can get permanent money or you can get temporary money now it is only foolishness to aspire for temporary money you become very rich by worshiping some devta you become learned by worshiping saraswati and then you forget all your wisdom leave all your money and you move on now it does not make any sense to a person who knows that he is eternal so if we are eternal we should seek only eternal returns so krishna tells they are foolish these demigods are also temporary you can also become that demigod whom you are worshiping these are posts just like any person can become prime minister finance minister defense minister home minister by proper qualifications so you yourself can become these demigods but even that is not desirable because all these are temporary positions because we are eternal we should work so that we come to our eternal platform what is the use if we attain everything and lose everything this is not intelligence so any person who has read even the translations of bhagavad gita he will not have this understanding worship any form any demigod and goddess you will attain the same result no worshipers of other demigods and goddesses are considered less intelligent avyaktam vyakti mapannam manyate mam buddhayah param bhavam ajananto mam avyayam anuttamam unintelligent men who know me not think that i have assumed this form and personality due to their small knowledge they do not know my higher nature which is changeless and supreme again very important understanding so krishna has described the worshipers of demigods as less intelligent and impersonalists also are described as less intelligent here abuddhaya buddhaya means intelligent that is how the word buddha has come abuddhaya means less intelligent or who is not intelligent so people who are telling a vyaktam unmanifest vyakti mapannam has taken a form of a vyakti abuddhaya he is less intelligent so all those people who are telling that impersonal energy has taken the form of krishna and this energy takes various forms you can worship any form they are less intelligent krishna is telling param bhavam bhavam is nature ajananto they do not know my supreme nature superior nature the nature of my body and your body is completely different the word used here is mama avyayam avyayam means my body is imperishable my body is not destroyed by the influence of time it is completely spiritual in nature so those people who do not know the nature of krishna's body they think krishna also has accepted a material body we should not surrender to krishna but to the impersonal within krishna these are all not proper understandings please read carefully if you know basic even hindi we can understand uh, or tamil or other languages very simple avyaktam vyakti mapannam avyakt is unmanifest vyakti means person apannam has assumed this form manyate mam those people who think of me they are abuddhaya less intelligent avyayam my body is imperishable there is no vyaya it does not perish so very simple understand very simple understand i will repeat so very simple understanding it is so we should read these instructions very carefully scrutinizingly and thus everything will be clear in spiritual life नाहम प्रकाश सर्वस्य योग माया समावृत मूढ़ोयम नाभिजानाति लोको मामजम अव्ययम आई एम नेवर मैनिफेस्ट टू द फूलिश एंड अनइंटेलिजेंट फॉर देम आई एम कवर्ड बाय माय इटर्नल क्रिएटिव पोटेंसी योग माया एंड सो द डिल्यूडेड वर्ल्ड नोज मी नॉट हु एम अनबोर्न एंड इनफैलिबल loko mam ajam avyayam so here krishna is telling again please understand avyayam avyayam i do not die i do not leave my body there is no difference between my body and soul it is eternal this form is eternal and ajam i do not take birth so repeatedly krishna is telling the superior nature of his personality he does not take birth he does not die he is an eternal personality but mudha foolish people are not able to understand krishna tells why yog maya samavrtaha i am covered by my energy 
just like if there is lot of light on the stage we are not able to see the performer or when there is lot of light on the performer performer is not able to see the audience so similarly krishna has got multifarious energies emanating from him and one of them is yoga maya which covers krishna from the foolish and ignorant people and thus they are not able to understand वेदाहम समतीतानि वर्तमानानि चार्जुना भविष्याणि च भूतानि माम तु वेदन कश्चना ओ अर्जुन एज द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉडहेड आई नो एवरीथिंग दैट हैज हैपेंड इन द पास्ट ऑल दैट इज हैपेनिंग इन द प्रेजेंट एंड ऑल थिंग्स दैट आर येट टू कम आई आल्सो नो ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज बट मी नो वन नोस So here Krishna is telling again the different nature of his personality he is different from ordinary living entities no ordinary person can know one's past present what is happening or the future life but Krishna knows all these things but Krishna is telling mam tu vedana kashchana me no one knows ichcha dvesha samutthena द्वंद्व मोहेन भारत सर्वूता सम्मोहम सर्गे यांति पर साइन ऑफ भरत अर्जुन ओ कॉन्कर ऑफ द फो ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज आर बॉर्न इन टू डेल्यूजन ओवरकम बाय द डुअलिटीज ऑफ डिजायर एंड हेट इच्छा द्वेश समुत्थेना द्वंद्व मोहेन भारत so people are overcome by the dualities of desire and hate original duality is we desire to become one with god and we hate to serve god this is the beginning of one's conditional life of material existence all of us who are there in trapped in these bodies in the material world we are envious of god that is why when it is described here we are servants of god we are subordinates we sometimes rebel what kind of god is krishna he is telling us to serve him but we don't rebel when a nice company gives us a job offer we are willing to become servants of any other person of this mundane material world simply for some money and we share on social media see i have got this nice job are what you are you are going to become servant of that person but here i am very happy similarly we are serving our family members we serve our parents always we give them all respects do we rebel oh, why we should give you respect you should give me respect do we tell our uh, father father you should touch my feet i will not fall at your feet no we do not do that we give all respect so there is respect when there is love but when there is envy then we ask on why i should give you respect why i should serve you no as a child would naturally like to serve the parents as employee wants to serve the employer and there is enjoyment for both in a similar fashion we have to understand there is a loving relationship between us and god he is our eternal parent so the servitorship of lord is not like servitorship in this material world it is like we serve our loving relatives people who love us the most this is service which is very very delightful to the heart so we should not be envious but when we are envious we hate serving god and we desire to become god one with god then our illusory condition begins and then we are caught with secondary desires and hates then we are into this world of duality here we make difference between honor and dishonor heat and cold like and dislike actually heat and cold is the same here in this material world honor and dishonor are the same pleasure and pain are also the same but if a person is lost in the bodily concept of life he or she will not be able to understand that pleasure and pain are the same these differences are only felt because of this illusory conception of this body येषां तु अंतगतं पापं जनानां पुण्यकर्मणां ते द्वन्द्व मोह निर्मुक्ता भजन्ते माम दृढवृताः 
persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life whose sinful actions are completely eradicated and who are freed from the duality of delusion engage themselves in my service with determination so this is important krishna tells everybody is born into delusion but yesham tu ant gatam papam those who are able to get freed from all the sinful reactions of the past ant gatam papam jananam punya karmanam and they are avowedly engaged only in pious activities in previous lives and in this life when the sinful actions are completely stopped te dvandva moha nirmukta they become freed from all dualities and confusion bhajante maam dridhvrita such a person can bhajante engage in my bhajan my service with dridhvrita so any person who is not doing bhajan of krishna they may be gyanis philosophers or yogis we have to understand they are not yet freed from the sinful reactions of the previous lives otherwise with dridhvrita with great determination they will be doing bhajan as it is mentioned here so a person who is doing bhajan he is considered the most pure of more purer than uh, an anastang yogi more purer than a gyan yogi more purer than a karmi but important uh, word used here is dvand moha nirmukta the confusions the dualities will be nullified only when we are freed from the sinful actions so we should be very eager to understand karmano hi api bodhavyam bodhavyam cha vikarmana what is sinful and what is pious what is right and what is wrong and even though we know what is wrong first of all we do not know the shastras are explaining at least don't commit these four kinds of sinful activities which are the pillars of all other sins which are these striya suna dyuti pana yatra papas chaturvidha the vedas describe these are the four great papas adharma sinful activities killing other living entities or meat eating that is called suna this is the biggest sin a person who is giving so much harm to other living entities cannot understand god will suffer life after life duty gambling pana intoxication and illicit sex these are the pillars of sinful life unfortunately we have made them pillars of our enjoyment but we see where is enjoyment in the long term there is only suffering if we are following these four principles very nicely no meat eating no animal killing no intoxication no gambling no illicit sex automatically we'll become happy in our lives and in that happy jolly mood we execute the principles mentioned in this book then we will realize god without any failure and then there will be no dualities in life heat and cold pain and pleasure will be undisturbed by all of them so this is very advanced stage but it is shown by great many spiritualists like prahlad maharaj prahlad maharaj was given poison but poison did not affect him and he was uh, kept in middle of so many snakes he was thrown from the mountain cliff he was made to sit among the hail storms nothing affected him heat and cold is all the same this very advanced stage the changes of matter is not affecting at all but this bhakti yoga process is so so wonderful that even a neophyte a beginner can experience such a platform so usually we think pleasure is good and pain is not good but actually both are same if a person is not having knowledge of krishna then pain is bad if a person gets pain and the person is dushkritina he'll become atheist god is giving me pain god is bad man so he'll become atheist either he will tell there is no god or he will become more envious of god thus pain is bad for a person who is having no knowledge of god who is dushkritina sinful and pleasure is also bad for such a person because such a person will simply enjoy the pleasures and he will think who cares about god what is the need of having god in life when i am when i am having so much of pleasure i will repeat and the pleasure is also bad because if a person is having material pleasures he will think what is the need of god anyway life is happy let me enjoy and then he does not know in the long term there would be miseries birth death old age disease for this temporary immediate gratification person will have to undergo 
दस पेन एंड प्लेजर बोथ आर इम्पेडिमेंट इन अल्टीमेट हैप्पीनेस इफ द पर्सन इज दुष्कृति दस प्लेजर एंड पेन बोथ आर सेम एंड इफ द पर्सन नोज एब्जोलो ट्रूथ देन अगेन पेन एंड प्लेजर आर बोथ द सेम इफ द पर्सन इज हैविंग ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ सेंस एंजॉयमेंट ही यूजेज दैम इन द सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा वेल्थ यूज इन द सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा पावर इन द सोसाइटी यूज टू मेक पीपल डिवोटीज ऑफ कृष्णा स्प्रेड दिस नॉलेज इन्फ्लुएंस यूज टू स्प्रेड दिस नॉलेज गुड काइंड फैमिली मेंबर्स ही टेक्स देयर हेल्प टू एंगेज इन द सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा एंगेज इज देन इन द सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा सो मटीरियल प्लेजर्स आर गुड दे हेल्प इम इन स्पिरिचुअल एडवांसमेंट एंड इफ पेन्स आर देयर देन इट यूज इट इफ द पेन इज देयर इफ देर आर फिजिकल मेलडीज डिजीजेज he uses it to get detachment from this world he realizes this material world is miserable and he realizes the ephemeral nature of this material world he purifies himself his consciousness the pains are also very good and they help a person get detached from this material world and it is an impetus for spiritual advancement the pain is also good it purifies one's intelligence so thus in krishna consciousness pain is also good and pleasure is also good so honor and dishonor both are good if somebody respects you then you give them this knowledge they will take it up if people disrespect you then it's okay remain detached from materialists and focus on krishna consciousness so devotee always remains free he is not working very hard to maintain social prestige if it comes it is okay if it goes that is also welcome does not matter so thus devotee is always undisturbed whether honor is coming dishonor is coming pain is coming pleasure is coming he knows both are good for my spiritual advancement so uh, if we are even a uh, little bit advanced in this knowledge we should not waste time tackling this material pains and pleasures we should understand the art of using both pains and pleasures in the service of krishna thus always remain aloof and thus become free from duality thus just imagine bhakti yoga is so wonderful in advanced stage anyway heat and cold Uh, nectar and poison is all same it is all nectar for a devotee vishwam purnam sukhayate whole world is full of happiness but even in the beginning devotee is unaffected by these dualities so this very extraordinary consciousness is offered to a bhakti yogi jara maran mokshaya maam aashritya yatanti te te brahm tad vidu kritsnam adhyatmam karma chakhilam intelligent persons who are endeavoring for liberation from old age and death take refuge in me in devotional service they are actually brahm because they entirely know everything about transcendental and fruitive activities sadhi bhuta di daivam maam sadhi yagyam cha ye viduhu prayan kale pi cha maam Teve dur yukta chet saha. Those who know me as the supreme Lord, as the governing principle of the material manifestation, who know me as the one underlying all the demigods, and as the one sustaining all sacrifices, can with steadfast mind understand and know me even at the time of death. So everyone has intelligence. Intelligence begins from how I can become happy, how I can get resources for my happiness, and beyond petty materialism of arm twisting the material nature, inventing ways to lord over nature. When people are advanced, they are able to understand adi bhutam adi devam, the principles of underlying. uh the management of the universal affairs the demigods and thus they understand oh actually by worshiping demigods i can be actually uh, opulent in material resources and they start worshiping demigods that is better intelligence but more advanced intelligence is when a person thinks why this arrangement is there that if i desire something one demigod has been given charge of fulfilling my desires why somebody has planned to fulfill my desires why do i have these desires in the first place who has created these desires within me and who has created this arrangement of fulfillment of the desires who is the ultimate designer and what is the purpose behind this design 
when a person reaches this level of inquiry that is perfection of human intelligence and then it is told here when a person understands adi bhutam adi devam mam that i am the underlying principle of all material manifestation the entire material uh, mat- i will repeat the entire material arrangement that we see around us there is man and there is woman they both complement each other and thus by reproduction the world population automatically it is sustained the ecosystem is sustained we need oxygen then the plants are giving us oxygen and plants need carbon dioxide we are giving carbon dioxide to them nice symbiotic arrangement is there the child is nourished very nicely in the womb of the mother and such wonderful arrangement who has done adi bhutam i am the person who is doing this wonderful laws of gravitation thermodynamics and quantum mechanics who is the person behind all of these arrangements and laws when a person understands krishna is behind all these wonderful material arrangements and laws when he understands he is the sustainer of all these demigods when a person knows that krishna is the ultimate object of all sacrifices i do yagya and my necessities are fulfilled krishna is sustaining this wonderful cycle of yagya krishna is the sustaining principle of everything in this existence then such a person surrenders to krishna and he can know krishna even at the time of death and thus he attains krishna in the next life without fail so this is the beginning of this most profound process of bhakti yoga and the conclusion of this chapter is concentration of the mind upon krishna maya sakta mana partha this is the way to understand krishna now how this path can be traversed and more details and science about this process krishna will explain in the coming chapters so now the most important segment of bhagavad gita has begun so please do not miss hearing the forthcoming chapters thank you so much for staying so long with us hearing seven chapters very soon we'll be discussing chapter number 8 hope to see you always chanting hari krishna maha mantra that is the way of keeping away all the sinful tendencies and always maintaining spiritual consciousness so please always chant hari krishna and be happy see you soon again hari krishna